This week on Maker Update, a morphing orb, rebooting make, a Pi TV wall, Apollo 11 projects, 3D printed lock picking, and an Arduino irrigator. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're doing great. I've been having a fun week. I got to do that cocktail robotics competition this past Sunday, and we shot a video for it, which should hopefully be on this DigiKey channel by the time you see this, so check that out. But for now, let's get started with the project of the week. The project that's blowing my mind this week is this interactive orb called Morph, made by a German design studio called Mindbuffer. The sculpture uses 155 linear actuators that are all lit up and have capacitive touch sensors on the ends. Little tiles of felt fill in the gaps between each module to create a flexible skin. If it just ran through an animation routine, it would be cool enough, but what's really great is that the touch sensors provide a degree of feedback to make it more of an interactive experience. There's no build documentation on this one, unfortunately, but check out the full video and photos. It's great inspiration to play around with actuators and LEDs and interaction design software like processing. It's time for some news. As I reported a few weeks back, Maker Media, the company behind Maker Fair and Make Magazine, has reformed as a new company called Make Community. In a blog post on make.co posted on Tuesday, more details have been announced, including a move to take Make Magazine back to its original smaller format and quarterly frequency. They also have a new annual membership program. You can find a link in the description to read all about it. Now for more projects. Over on the Magpie, Johanna Tano talks about how she was able to connect up and manipulate this wall of different CRT TVs. Using a web-based interface, she's able to select and stream video clips to the TVs over a Node.js server. This way, she can decide what clips will play back on a single TV and which will scale out across multiple screens. This is another one where I love the idea, but I wish the code was shared, but there's enough here to get inspired and find a solution. On Instructables, Greg Zumwalt shows off these simple bowls that he made by 3D printing a flat pattern that can be pulled apart, stacked, and then glued together to form a new shape. It's a neat idea that I'm excited to see explored to make other kinds of forms and projects. And in the aftermath of the Apollo 11 50th anniversary, two projects that caught my eye. The first is this ESP32 powered e-ink display that replays the communication of the Apollo 11 mission synchronized to the original timing. Within this project, I learned that there's a GitHub repo with the original Apollo 11 transcript formatted as a spreadsheet and marked with timing info, which is kind of cool and a unique undertaking. Bigger than that though, there's a site called apolloinrealtime.org that takes it all up a notch with audio recordings, photos, and timelines. It's the kind of thing that I would just have a Raspberry Pi automatically load on boot and play in the background on an old monitor. The other Astro project I enjoyed seeing this week was this replica Snoopy cap from Monkaboo. The Snoopy caps carried the communications headset for Apollo 11 astronauts. They're a real hallmark of these early missions and Monkaboo just had to have one for herself. She walks through her process of copying the pattern, sewing the fabric pieces, and then 3D modeling and printing the headset elements. It's a fun ride. I have a few tools and tips to share with you. First, after raving about David Picciuto's plywood curfing technique in last week's show, he's now got a video up that dives even deeper into his technique. He makes this bent plywood coat rack and gives advice on glue choice, clamping, and applying veneer. I also found this video and design by Peter Thinks on how to make your own snap style lockpick tool. It's for educational purposes only, of course, or aspiring locksmiths. With this, instead of having a whole suite of different picks to hold and probe each pin in a lock, you just provide a light twisting tension and rake the pins while snapping the button as you go. You have to provide your own pick, but the whole mechanism can be downloaded from Peter's pin shape page for a few bucks and then 3D printed at home. Another tool I was happy to learn about here were these electrician scissors recommended by my friend Dominic Morrow. These are sturdy, stubby scissors that are great for cutting cables and ties. On Gareth Branwin's Tips, Tools, and Shop Tales newsletter, I learned about this tip from Becky Stern on using wide rubber bands to hold things in your third hand tool that are too large to fit in the clip. Also a tip from maker Sean Reagan on using finger ratchets and one from Sophie Wong on laser cutting templates to create storyboard boxes in her notebooks. 
And one of the most inspiring Maker videos I saw this week wasn't a project video, but this profile on Maker Bunny Huang, his life as an engineer, and his philosophy around hacking and open source hardware and software. Highly recommended. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out this project by Cody from the Another Geek Moment video series. He goes over how to set up an automatic plant watering system using an Arduino Uno, sensors, and a peristaltic pump, and a handful of components. The code, instructions, and downloadable 3D printed parts can all be found over on maker.io. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. You can also get on the Maker Update email newsletter to get show notes emailed out to you automatically every week. A huge thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for sponsoring this show. Now, next week, I'll be doing my monthly edition over on the Adafruit channel, so you can check me out there. But I'll also be back here right after that. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.